All right, before we jump right into live demonstrations, I'm gonna give you a quick technical overview of the UR10E press brake operator package. Um, you have a heavy duty mobile robot cart with the 10E collaborative robot mounted to it. As you can see, we have a, a dress pack here on the robot to protect your cords, cables, all that kind of stuff. And then you get the uh, mid-Atlantic gripping system, which we'll get into more detail as we bend. And that's really what allows us to pick up a variety of these different parts and do things the competition can't. Um, another key feature is you can see the box down here on the press brake. We take this M12 quick disconnect cord set and that's what integrates the robot to and from the machine. We hook and unhook that cord set very quickly along with the 110 volt power and the air and the robot is ready to move to another machine tool. I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about the press brake. Today we're using a uh, 7036, which is a servo electric press brake by Trump, and it has a 40 US ton, 40 inch bending capacity on it. So let's go ahead and get into some demonstrations. All right, we're going to start out the demos here with a uh, part from the Angle family like we talked about earlier. This part's going to have bends on one side of it. This particular part has two bends. Go ahead and get right into it here. Already got the program loaded on the robot and the press brake. Robot tells me the ram's home correctly and I hit continue. Here's our first bend, reposition, grip. Robot finds the back gauges with the uh, force mode. You pick the part up, drop it in the box. Now in your bending operation, you can put parts in a box like this. We can also um, palletize uh, carts, conveyors, all kinds of options there. It just kind of depends on the application. Bend one more for you here. All right, so we bent our first angle type part here. You can see that we've got two nice, crisp, clean 90 degree bends. For our next demo, we're going to go ahead and set up a channel type part. To do that, I'm going to pick up our blank here, show you what that looks like in the flat. I'm going to go ahead into the press brake. To go to the press brake, I'm going to load my program. Go ahead and apply that. So I get a picture of the blank, make sure I'm holding it the right way. I always like to run the ram up and down a couple times just to make sure that uh, we're at the right opening height for the robot whenever we start the program. So just like any other part when we run a press brake, we're gonna stick the blank in here. And we're gonna hand bend one. Come over, we're gonna check our angle. That one looks pretty good. We're gonna let it go. Go ahead and put our next bend in here. So there's your channel type part we're going to bend with the robot. Um, now we just want to make sure that we are back on our first bend and that our green light is ready to go, ready to get the robot set up. So we'll move over here now and what we're going to do is go to the programming window in the robot and we're going to open the program. I named this one Demo 2 to help me find it. Go ahead and bring the program in. Let's play button, take the robot home. Now it tells me the ram's home correctly. I'm gonna go ahead and start the bending process. I'm gonna go ahead and put our parts box back in here. Now this is where we're gonna use some gripping technology to save some time. Uh, 
Being able to rotate the part like that saves you from having to sit the part down and reposition it and really does offer you some time savings advantage. Again, the robot's using force mode to make sure that it seats on the back gauges properly. Regrip the part. Fire an output, rotate the gripper, go right back in and make another bend. So here we have the second part that we bent. It's a channel type part. You can see very small flanges. We're able to uh, use the rotary gripper on it. Got nice clean 90 degree bends on that part too. All right, we're gonna go ahead and bend the uh, third demonstration part now. It's gonna be another part from the channel family I've prepared for you today. Um, this is a three bend part. We're gonna go ahead and get right into this one. So just like our other parts, robots taking it in, using the force mode, regripping. Now we're going to go ahead and flip this part over, put it back in. The gripping system really is going to show its adaptability right here and how it can help you program parts faster and easier. Instead of repositioning and repicking right there, we're going, rotating the gripper, going back into the force mode and bending. Part comes out, goes into the box. Just like with other things going on, you can uh, do palletizing or any other things with the parts coming off of the robot. So here we're going to do a flip. And this is where the real time savings comes in with the rotation of the gripper. Use that force mode, make sure we find that back gauge every time. So we'll take a quick look at the third part we bent here. You can see we've got three bends, uh, opposite return flange there. Once again, nice, crisp, clean looking part. All right, so we just wanted to take a minute here now, and while we're bending this third part, just show you the uh, safety that's built into the robot. I have a two-zone safety scanner here. We're just gonna demonstrate how it works. The robot running. And do you see the robot slows down when I get into the first zone here? We'll go ahead and let it do its thing. It's in reduced mode. So whenever I walk out of this zone, the robot will return to full speed. So let's say I was to walk through here and get too close at all. Now the robot will completely stop. The nice thing about this is when I exit the zone, the robot will continue working. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk out like I was just leaving the area. And that just gives you a nice little example of how you can further safeguard people. Even though it's a collaborative robot, you are moving at very high speeds and you have sheet metal. So we will protect you and we'll customize this to the application and it will be taken care of at the risk assessment at the end of the project. That concludes the live demonstrations for today. We'd uh, like to open it up to questions now.